So Nintendo Switch Original, someone tried to repair it, replaced the USB-C port, but made no difference. It's my daughter's Switch, and sadly it went completely flat after she played it. And put it to sleep instead of turning it off, never worked right again. Tried another Switch charger, but still the same problem. So they've tried a separate charger. Only charges with the cable facing one way and is temperamental to get it to charge and won't dock happened after it went completely flat. And now what they're saying is that it's very, uh, very temperamental. So sometimes it charges, sometimes it doesn't. It could be an extremely frustrating thing. So we know that this has been worked on before in which case if we know what if, if we know that it's been worked on before i always again say to people especially in the terms and conditions that there's no guarantee what can happen um you know i can break it you are opting in for a free repair service here hopefully that isn't the case and hopefully we can get it fixed first thing i'm going to probably do is check the port under the microscope and see how it's looking okay i'll tell you what that's looking pretty clean hey it looks a bit weird there at the back but other than that why does that look so weird Wait there. It looks different, you know? So does it turn on? Has it got any juice in it? it? Does have juice. Okay. Just very temperamental. Well, it's on 94%. Okay, so it's got a game in as well by the looks of it. Super Smash. Yeah, it's got Super Smash. Does it have an SD card? No. It, okay, so it doesn't it doesn't come with an SD card as far as I can tell. Uh Joy-Cons seem to be all good. That is strange how it's on. Let's plug it in then and see how temperamental it actually is. PCB Way is throwing a birthday bash and you are invited. You've got yourself some absolute mega discounts on PCB services, 3D printing and CNC machining. Whether you're building a robot or a rocket, please don't actually go ahead and build a rocket, but they have you covered. Coupons as well. Who says no to free money? Yes, please. And just when you think that's enough and it's all over, scroll to the bottom and make sure you get yourself entered into the lucky draw. You have to act fast though this all disappears around july the 18th so what are you waiting for go now and grab your fluxy juicy deals i'll leave a link down below in the description thanks to pcb weight for sponsoring today's video no charge let me turn it over could be my meter as well so i need to turn it around the other way let's do that wait did that just start charging or not. It's not charging now. Let me turn it back around. It started charging, so maybe my meter was the right way. Anything on the amp meter? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I wonder. Wait there. I'm going to try something again. Wait there. Hold on. Wow, chat. What's that? Did you see that? I've never seen that before in my life. Right. Pay attention to this. So I take it out. Right. 93%. I plug it in. Nothing. Nothing. As soon as you plug it in, nothing. But wait a second. I'm not touching anything. Charging. I wonder if this is one of those faults with like the V1. Yeah, this is really strange. Let me try the other way. No, I've never seen this before in my life. So we've got an issue whereby on one side, it takes about five seconds to actually charge and start charging. The other side, it doesn't charge at all. Let's go back this way. Watch. So I put it in the original way. Look at that. That was a bit too quick for my liking though. So wait there. It shouldn't have been that quick based on historic events. There we go. Right. It's not charging. As we can see from the ammeter, we're getting nothing. But wait. Wait for it. 15 volts. Let's wiggle the cable. Fine look. Absolutely fine. Still charging. So let's turn the display off. Ah. Correct. Shiro. Great spot. So when the display's off, the switch charges. Huh? And I make the screen black. And I go to charge it. Ah, no. Hmm. Now it's not charging. Now it's charging. I see what they're saying when they say it's temperamental. And uh, like, I, I, I understand how that could be extremely frustrating. My worry is that this is one of those ones whereby if I now go and change a bunch of things, M92T36 or the port or anything like that, I'm a little bit scared that it's going to brick the device. That's where I'm at. Something's not right with this. <laughs> and these are the ones you need to be super, super careful of. If you're doing like repairs as a service for people, this is where you would probably contact the customer and say, look, this is what's happening. This is a very strange and weird fault. I've never seen it before. If I go ahead with this, there is a chance that it could brick the device. Are you okay for me to go ahead? That is probably a conversation that needs to be had if you were doing this as a service and you were charging for the service i think the port tester is a great shout here it'd be the indestructible fuse delaying the draw potentially cody but it also goes to the five volts by the looks of it so let's put this in and see if the port is okay is it just a bad port ah, ah this is also a first i've never seen a full line of reds 
ever. So I think it's probably safe to say there's an issue here with the port. I'm just going to do it again on the other side. It might not still be an issue with the port, by the way. It could also be something to do with a chip. Ah, see, that side is okay. So this is where I could potentially be leaning towards M92 T36. And the reason being is because you can very often get one side of the port charge and one side of the port not with M92 T36. And this side is okay again. Now, because one side was okay, one side wasn't, and then uh, and then it swapped back, and now both sides are okay, I'm going to go ahead and say I think it's the port, is my guess, which I feel a little bit safer working on now because I feel like it's the port. Now, it has been open before, so we also need to bear this in mind, right? It's been open before because A, it stated it in the email that it's had a port change, so it's clearly been open, so we do need to bear that in mind. I'm also just going to take the game out here as well. It doesn't have an SD card, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, we need to turn it off as well. So the email states, it won't dock. Happened after it went completely flat. We know that it doesn't dock. And we know that it's very temperamental with the charging. So let's try and get it fixed for this person. Try my hardest. Right, let's see how this shop put this back together. Because to be honest with you, it looks like they've done a good job with the screws. None of the screws were threaded, by the way. Which is obviously a very, very good start. That didn't feel like it was on correctly. The SD card. I guess I'll never know. That's an unfortunate part of that scenario, isn't it? But this is very clean, man. This is a very, very clean Nintendo Switch, isn't it? Quick general inspection here. Looks like a clean job, if I'm being honest. Battery battery connector looks a little bit... No, that's okay. But it looks like a relatively clean job. They did rip the foam. That's obviously no biggie. There's some markings on the board, so I don't know if that's from them. I'll check m 9 tt 36 I don't know if that's been replaced or not. And then we've obviously got the port situation, but it looks really clean, guys. I have to give props to whoever repaired this before. Doesn't look like they replaced the thermal paste. That looks dry, dry. The Luckily, the Nintendo Switch doesn't require too much, but I don't think they've replaced that. No, they haven't. That's factory paste. Because it's really dry. That's strange. And, uh, you know, how much does that cost? Probably like half a penny or something worth of thermal paste. A penny, maybe. Joe, I've got to say, if you wash that left-hand glove one more time, I reckon it's going to disintegrate. Hey, leave me alone. Yeah, these these are wash gloves, chat. These are clean. Look, this is how they come out. You know how dirty they do get? This is how they look afterwards. They even left a little bit of thermal putty on the BQ chip. That's um, that's cool to see. Again, not massively needed, but... Thing, yeah, they do stuff like that, which takes like a lot of... That's, that's a nice bit of care to show to a device, you know? But they're not just chucking on some thermal paste for them? I don't know. Right, let's have a look at this port underneath the scope then, shall we? Yeah, I can see the issue already. So, you know, everything looks good from the outside, but then as soon as you start digging down, you can really see some things. I'm just checking M92 as well. Has that been changed? They've done that good of a job if they have that I can't tell. So that's always a good sign, really. I don't think so. It looks like there's a bunch of thermal paste that's been like smeared across the board, though. That's for sure. But yeah, so a couple of things on this. It could have been that the port was working absolutely fine, which is kind of the vibe that I got from the email is that it was working with no issues. And then over time, because we've got a lack of solder that's especially come up the legs here, maybe it's that the port was a little bit... I mean, it doesn't feel loose now. No, to be fair, it doesn't feel loose. So maybe we can write that exp that, that um excuse off, eh? I'm just looking inside the port now. I don't know what port it is. I don't know where they got the port from. But some of those connections don't look fantastic to me and i don't want to poke too much because i don't want to yeah so that that one's loose i don't want to poke too much i want do you know what i wonder if i just solder these pins because i think it's working from one side not the other saying that again that would be the lazy thing to do and the reason why is because even at the back here i think we could just straight up replace this port so let me do that let me replace the port and then we'll um we'll give it a test if it doesn't work in the docking station after we've done that then um what we'll most probably look to do is go for p13 usb i will do some checks around it after i put the port on just to make sure while i replace it just reflow it as much as i could do that i'd like to put some more solder on the pads underneath because there might be a dodgy connection under there it could be that there's not just not enough solder in which case i waste my time with a reflow and what i actually would have needed to do anyway is just replace the port there's too many ums and ahs with this job to not just straight up replace the port i feel like it would just be a lot easier for me to replace the port than mess about with other things is what i'm basically saying and once i and the thing is as well i don't know the status of this underneath so if i know that i myself do a good job i'll sleep sound at night and don't forget the ports are relatively cheap you know they're, they're less than a pound now i think for nintendo switches and i think they'll i don't know if it'll get any cheaper than that now this is going to be leaded solder underneath so i'm actually going to put this a little bit lower than what i'd usually operate operate at 
I'm going to do 400 with a 50% and see what the situation is under here. How do you handle shaky hands while soldering? I've noticed my hand are extremely shaky. Uh, Boogie, it, it just it's just practice, I think, my friend. I think that's probably the best bit of advice I can give anybody is it's just going to be time, patience, and practice. And try and get yourself ambidextrous. I mean, down at 400, this should be coming off if it's leaded. Here we go. I don't want to rip anything. Make sure we're definitely good there. Okay, we look all right. We look fine. Don't put the same port back on, Joey. Been there before. Although it didn't look too bad, to be fair. So it might not be the worst thing in the world. A little bit of flux. Now, let me put my iron back up because I lowered it for something else. I'm just going to fill in these holes with some more solder because it looked like there was more solder needed here, didn't it? In my opinion. I'm just going to put a little blob there. A little blob there. Quite a bit more there. And there and then a little bit on the end that might need some more you know i think i can see that it was bare i don't know if you guys can see that as well some of those joints weren't didn't have a lot of soldering at all and then if i run over it that's better see how they're a bit thicker now you have that bridge i need some i attempt flux Okay, let me give that a clean. There we go. Now, whilst the board is hot, I'm actually going to move rather quick here, okay? Now, that port is going to go in my memory box because I've started building that up again. And I'm going to go with a tiny bit of flux just here. And I'm going to spread that around just to all of the little areas on the uh, underneath the port here. There we go. Now, I'm going to come straight back in. Whilst the board has still got that heat retention in, I'm going to come in with the new port. And hopefully, we're going to smash this out of the park. Hopefully. There we go. It took ages to, like, molten. Hopefully my heating element's okay. Right. Now that that's molten, we're going to come in with a port. Here we go. Just make sure it's sat down properly. Give it a little wiggle about. I like to wiggle it about because it kind of sits on the pads properly at that point. I'm just going to hold it there. And I come off now. And straight away. Pretty much. Take out the board holder over to the desk and I'll give that a clean. Clean first, inspection after because I like to clean it when it's nice and hot. Front, back, side to side, you name it. Looks clean to me, hey? All seems solid to me. Sweet. Let's just make sure first of all that we get a charge both ways, okay? That's what I'm looking for here. I get nothing that side. Wait there then. So I get something that side. That's right. Let me turn it around. Oh no, you know what that means. Charging one way, not the other. What do we think? I'm confident with that port. I think it's M92T36. I think it's M92T36. What I'm going to do now is change M92T36. If it's not that chip, M92 is the power management IC. If it's not that chip, I'll go for another port swap. Or I'll just kind of reflow the port. But I'm... I am very confident with the port itself. It looks great. It's very flat to the board. All the front pins were solid, which is usually a good indication that the pins underneath are okay. So I'm going to say it's an M92T36 personally, which could have been our issue straight at the start. Would have maybe explained the reason it was like slow charging. Could be P13 as well, but my my guess is uh, M92T36 personally. Let's get that changed out. Let's take this chip off the board then. You guys know how it is. Now we're going to do a little bit of flux. I'm going to come down on the air. About 30% here. Remember, this, not, this might not fix it. There we go. See that? See it move? Perfect. I do have another M92T36 just in case this one doesn't work. Just wait for that to cool down for a second. Then I'm going to come in with my cough. And I don't need to inspect that. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. To know that it's been soldered on. Right. Let's try again. Are we going to get a charge both ways? Or is it going to be something like a charging port? Three. Two. One. Charge one way. Yep. 15 volts. Does it charge the other? Yes, it does. Jubbly. Let me just make sure it's still. Yes, perfect. So, again, we're going to double check. One way. 15 volts, up to 100. Ball's still hot, which is why it's high amp draw. Perfect. Other way. 
drop down. There we go. Perfect. I will quickly check around P13 USB. I think we're going to be okay. Just to make sure all the filters are all right before I put it back together and call it there. Um, because I need to make sure that it works on a docking station because that is obviously a, a problem that they were having. So uh, let's go continuity mode quickly. Here's P13 USB. Let's just check and make sure that all these filters are a-okay. Now what I'm looking for here is a beep through and not across. So that's okay, that one. That one's okay. All good. 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 Fine. Fine. Yeah, all these filters are okay. Um, and to be honest with you, if there was a shorted capacitor around uh, P13 USB, it would uh, it would brick the device. Not necessarily all the time, but I've not seen it where it hasn't. And the device is fine. It still turns on. So let's put it back in the chassis and see if it displays on a docking station. That feels really sh strange, by the way. It just doesn't feel like it fits that great. Again, this has been taken apart before, but... I mean, that's just like, it doesn't feel like it's going in at all, which is really weird. I hope it's not the connections on the motherboard. There we go. Got it. Yeah. Okay, fine. Sometimes there can be a little bit of a pain, those. And the, the best bit of advice I can give you for, for that, that sort of situation is don't get impatient with it. Don't push it harder. Just like keep wiggling it around and eventually it will just fall in. I can go for the test now. Does it turn on? I really hope so. Yes, it does. <laughs> Wicked. Test number one, we've passed. Oh, that's dark though. Wait a minute. That's a slow boot, which indicates a bad M92T36. Did you see how it was dark? And now we're just hanging. No, it's not that. No, it's definitely, it's de we definitely got an issue boot in here. Let's turn it off. I'll go for a battery disconnect and we'll try it again. But now it's not turning on. So we just disconnect quickly. Leave it for a couple of seconds. And we'll put it back in. Be interesting to see if we still get a charge, hey? Yeah, so we still get the charge. So is it going to turn on? Yeah, so there's the battery indicator. Is it going to boot? No, you see, do you see how it starts really dark and dim? And see how it's like creeping up? Got to be M92T36. And that is sticking at 440. So it's almost getting stuck at some some sort of the boot phase. So I need to really, really quickly change out M92T36 with another one. When I say really quickly, obviously take my time and do things slowly. Because you can't rush these things. You start rushing things is when you start making mistakes. It does mean that I also need to put some more thermal paste on, but that's also okay. Wait a minute, maybe that's... That could be the that could be a game card reader thing actually. I remember I said it kind of sucked to go in. Could it be the game card reader? Let me just disconnect it. I just wonder. Wow. What a shout by the way. <laughs> we just saved ourselves a bunch of time, I tell you that. <laughs> Oh, wow. Obviously, the, the digitizer isn't actually going to work now. Okay, let me check it again. Make sure I want a fluke. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I'm actually really shocked and surprised. Really shocked and surprised. I just thought maybe it's going to... I can't remember. Something at the back of my brain was like, Joey, just... I feel like you've had this problem before. Just check that cable. All right. So that's interesting because I know the game card reader was actually working before. So was the digitizer. That's very strange. Is plug that back in... And what I'm hoping is that maybe we just had a bit of a dodgy connection. Do you, Cause do you not remember me saying that it was a little bit hard to actually get in? Right, there we go. That feels that feels in. Let me put the speaker back in now. Let's have a look. Is it gonna boot normally or not? Nintendo. There we go. It was just a dodgy connection on the game card reader. Now we're all good. Touch screen. Oh, digitizer not working. Hold on. I think the game card reader is dodgy because that's now not working. Digitizer is not working now. Now, I'm just going to change out the card reader and see if that is the situation. Does that feel better? I'm going to go with I'm going to go with a meh. I'm, I'm opting with a meh. I don't know if it does feel better or not. Does the digitizer work? And well, does it boot, I guess, as well? Yes, it boots. Nice. There definitely might have been a bad card slot reader then. Digitizer. Yeah, buddy. There we go. I just need to make sure that the game works. So we had Super Smash Bros in here. Super Smash Bros. Does it work in the dock? <laughs> works in the docking station. All good. Charges both ways. Uh, it's definitely not temperamental anymore. We get 14 volts, 500 milliamps. Turn it around to the other way. Not put the... Heat sink back on yet. Yeah, there we go. So we're charging both sides. Not temperamental at all. It doesn't take a while to load up anything like that. We are all good. 
to go. I'm going to return this free repair to the customer and hopefully they're going to get plenty of time out of this Nintendo Switch.